A relationship at a certain point has to go beyond emotion and it goes over to commitment, right? And when it goes over to commitment, that's me choosing, determined to hold on. That's me saying that I'm continuing on with this. But at some point, if it's toxic for you or me, or if it's causing effects that I don't want in my life, then that doesn't mean that I don't love you, but it means I can't be in a relationship with you. Yeah. And hello and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationships from surviving, surviving to thriving. thriving. Today on TMC, we we will have another episode of Girl Talk, and we are glad that you are joining us. And if this is your first time joining us, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified each time we upload a video. So on this exciting episode, we are discussing the lies about love. discuss the lies about love you said you had a question I do I do I have a question you know there's a lot of things people tend to say about love and things we pick up from just conversations and the old people in our lives but one of the things society says is that love is blind Mm. do you believe that's true I would say no okay people say that because of whatever their perspective is but I don't think love is blind because when we think about someone being blind, being blindfolded, mm-hmm. being blindsided, that's something you can't see. True. So that's like saying love I can't see. Mm. Love that goes without vision because a person has to be at a certain level visually for them to be declared blind, which means they can't see. So I I disagree. I don't say that love is blind. I agree with your disagreement <laughs> because when you say love is blind, that means that I'm making a decision from a place of not having full information. Mm-hmm. And is that really, cause love always gives you a choice. I remember this movie, uh, I think it's deliver us from Eva. Mm. And at the end where she says, you took my choice away. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like when we say love is blind, it takes your choice away. Cause that means that there's something hidden. Like you say, something that I can't see. Mm-hmm. So I'm not operating under full information. Mm-hmm. And what I think really happens in that situation, love is not blind, but love bears and it's long mm-hmm. suffering, like things of that nature. I think that's a better description of love is not that I'm ignoring or I'm ignorant mm-hmm. to somebody's flaws or whatever the case may be. Love says, I'm loving you, that those flaws that you have doesn't disqualify mm-hmm. you for that. I mm-hmm. can see it. I can see it. I can mm-hmm. see it, but I choose to love you. From a perspective of thinking love is blind. For the person who may be saying that is because they want you to look past or they want you to look beyond what is right in your face. When we love people, we oftentimes look past things. We choose to say, okay, I understand this is a shortcoming for them or okay, this is somewhere they're still working at. And because I love you, it doesn't change the way I feel about you. That's right. But at the same time, I'm not blind to it. I see it, but I'm choosing to look past it or I'm choosing to say that the way I feel for you goes beyond what I'm currently seeing. Maybe because of my idea, my perspective that there's more to come. Or yeah. that there is something greater, maybe some type of, I hate to say potential, because sometimes that can go <laughs> left or right, but some type of potential. Yeah. You say something and I love it. It's, you know, they say, don't find somebody with baggage, but you, you say the opposite. Mm-hmm. And I love yeah. what you say is that find someone that's going to help you carry their baggage Absolutely. and one day unpack it and hopefully drop it off somewhere. Absolutely. And I think when you have the, it, it can be a little bit unhappy to say love is blind because mm-hmm. it's like, I'm going to ignore that suitcase you brought yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, I see the suitcase, mm-hmm. but Absolutely. let's develop a plan. I'm willing to help you carry that suitcase mm-hmm. and like you say, and hopefully one day unpack it and drop, drop it off, it off. Yeah, somewhere. And so it's like that unhealthy things. Like I'm not ignoring anything. Mm-hmm. I'm fully aware because I was, I love Dr. Thomas. Yeah, I've been yeah, reading that book. Awesome. Yes. He was awesome. I've been reading the books. I, I was like Cedric. I went to a seller and got the book. Yeah. But one of the things he says is that healing can occur when we take things from the subconscious to the to conscious. The conscious. Oh, yeah. And I think that love is blind. It leaves it in the subconscious. Mm-hmm. But to really function in a healthy, holistic manner, Mm -hmm. you have to take it to the conscious and to say love is not blind. 
Absolutely. And the fact that you brought up Dr. Thomas Jordan, one of our amazing guests, he mm -hmm. said it multiple times. And that's what stood out to me. One of the big things that I took away from that interview, everything he talked about was you being conscious about it. And this idea of love being blind to me, that's like, if I could see it, then I'm choosing to be unconscious or operating in the unconscious, like, oh, this didn't happen. No, I see it. I'm conscious of it. I'm paying attention to it, but I'm choosing to give grace at this moment. I'm choosing to yeah. say that, you know, I believe there's more to you or there's more to the situation or there's more to come or you're still working on it, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And I think when he said that in so many different ways, operating from a conscious level, knowing what you know mm -hmm. and holding on to that, using it as research to make decisions, to make choices, using it as information, because that's what it is. Yeah. Thinking about Dr. Thomas, that's all I could see or remember from that interview over and over again is to be conscious. And that's the same way I would think of it if someone is saying love is blind. I get we have all these, and we'll talk about some more of them. Mm -hmm. We have these terms and these things that we say about love especially when there's a negative outcome mm -hmm. to the situation. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that's my get out of jail free yeah, card. Yeah. It's like the one that says, love me unconditionally. And I think that is truthfully stated. But I think a lot of times when people say that, it's just what you were saying is mm -hmm. I don't want to have to deal with the consequences of my actions. Absolutely. Because I can love you unconditionally, but you still gonna have to deal with mm -hmm. the consequences mm -hmm. of whatever the outcome is. Absolutely. Because loving you unconditionally means I'm loving you without condition. I, I'm going to love you as long as I got the house. I'm going to love mm -hmm. you as long as you got the money. That's that's a condition. I'm going to love you as long as we travel in the world, whatever it is. As long as I'm the one benefiting, I'm going to love you. That's a condition. But then when we think about everything that we discuss, and like I said, oftentimes using it as a scapegoat, mm -hmm. it's that person not wanting to deal with their consequences yeah. to their actions. It's that person not wanting to feel the repercussions to the choices they made. Even when we were kids in school, we learned cause and effect. There's a cause and now you're dealing with the effect, but we try to turn it into other things. You should love me unconditionally. Why do you have to say that to me is what you have to ask yourself. Why are you having to say that to me? Because I'm already loving you without condition. This is you being responsible for your actions. Two yeah. different things. And, you know, two things popped in my head. One of the things is that that's a very fine line with someone because it leads to manipulation. Yeah. Fine line between manipulations. But the second part, I think, is what we said a couple of podcasts ago. I think people are not using the right verbiage sometimes mm -hmm. because... I think there's a difference between the relationship and me loving you. Mm -hmm. Like something may be a deal breaker in a relationship, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I still don't love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That my love for you doesn't change, but how I relate to you may have to change Absolutely. because of your behavior or your actions. Absolutely. Because you can definitely love a person and not still be in relationship with them. Yeah. Because a relationship goes beyond emotions. A relationship at a certain point has to go beyond emotion and it goes over to commitment, right? Mm -hmm. And when it goes over to commitment, that's me choosing, determined to hold on. That's me saying that I'm continuing on with this. Mm -hmm. But at some point, if it's toxic for you or me, or if it's causing effect that I don't want in my life, then that doesn't mean that I don't love you, but it means I can't be in a relationship with you. Yeah. And I think that's true. I think that people connect them together because a lot of times, and what we're talking about is that that negative thing, like, you know, a, you should love me unconditionally, meaning I want you to do that for me despite what I'm doing and despite how I'm responding. So give an example what, of that. So they cheated on their spouse and the spouse is addressing the fact that you cheated. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, you should love me unconditionally or saying you, you're going to find a job for a while and, and you laying on the couch every day when I come home and you should love me unconditionally. What I want from you is to bypass or ignore that I'm not doing and just say, oh, it's OK. I love you unconditionally. Oh, it's OK. Just keep laying on the couch, watching TV. It's OK, you know. <laughs> That's not what that term is meant for you to abuse or mm. to manipulate to be able to take advantage of someone is something totally different. That's yeah. kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about the lies about love. Yeah. What happens is that in the context of that conversation, what you're saying is that I should be allowed to keep hurting you and exactly. you be OK with and you that. you should be OK with Yeah. Exactly. And it's like it doesn't love doesn't behave like that. Mm -hmm. 
Now you're behaving like that. And that speaks apart from the love that you have for me, but I have to address that because if we're in partnership together and we're not dressed it together and you Mm -hmm. continue on, Mm -hmm. like you said, how I relate to you may have to change. My love for you doesn't change, but how I relate to you, I might need to set different boundaries of Mm -hmm. how I'm relating to you, but I still love you. Because I used to have a struggle because there are some couples, they get married and they get divorced and they say, I still love them. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand that for the longest, but now I understand because Mm -hmm. that love hadn't changed, but I can't relate to you in that husband and wife manner. And that love is the patience, the kindness, the concern, the gentleness that you extend to them, that being concerned for them and having empathy for their well-being. When they're sick, you're concerned. You want them to be well. You want you want good for them even when you're not with them. It's, it, that's that's me loving you because I still want you to be prosperous. I still want you to be good. I still want life to be great for you even though we're not in relationship because yeah. the two of us in relationship just doesn't work. We see that from family relationships because mm-hmm. uh, you may have a estranged parent-child uh, relationship mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like that love that you have for your child or love that you have for your parent never changes, but mm-hmm. the way we relate is changing and it's different. And it's like the love never changed. The love is still mm-hmm. there, but this is happening. So I can't relate to you in this particular way. And, or you see like with friends, it's like, mm-hmm. I love her dearly, but I can't let her in mm-hmm. my inner space mm-hmm. in this place. So I think that's so good, but off on a tangent a little bit, I think that's the hardest part when it comes to breakup. I think it is because I love this person. Watch and your brain and your emotions tell you, well, then if you love them, them. yeah, Yeah. you're supposed to be in a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And that could be hard because it's like, I've experienced that. Like, Mm -hmm. I love this person. I want to relate to you, but we can't relate in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. And that makes the, because your brain is like, you love them, so you should be together. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it don't always... It don't always happen like it that. Do, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I think that goes back to the consciousness. That's mm-hmm. when that consciousness comes up and you, you're like, you're aware that I love this person, but to continue to be in relationship with them is toxic for both of us yeah. or it's toxic for me. It's hurtful to me because the other person, whomever they may be, they may be fine. And I'm okay with our relationship continuing to rock like this. What's your problem? We good as far as I'm concerned. And then you're like, no, this, that, and the other, and the third hurt me. Or this, that, and the other is continuing to cause harm to me. Or this continues to take me emotionally to a space that I don't want to be in. And when you say that, then it's like, oh, well, then you don't love me. No, that's not true. I love you. But the consequences in our relationships is far beyond what we can bear. You mentioned something earlier that I say about baggage, and I mean that wholeheartedly because I believe that most of us, all of us, we have some type of baggage, whatever it is, childhood trauma, drama, whatever we have brought past relationships, we bring that with us and that baggage is there. But the awesome, wonderful thing is to be in relationship with someone that can help you carry that baggage, that makes that baggage a little bit lighter. And then along the way, that person lovingly challenges you or they lovingly nudge you. Let's open that bag. Let's open that bag. Let's see what's in there. And when that happens, now you have to consciously be aware and say, okay, I got some brokenness in this bag. I got some hurts that's still in this bag. I have some childhood trauma that's still in this bag. And you may not want to pull all of it out at one time, but you have to begin to look at those things so that you can unpack that and you can take it off or at least be aware of what's in the bag. Yes. That was a, a quote. I think I told you this and I didn't realize I was still doing this. The quote is that I refuse to set myself on fire to keep other people warm. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes is that we will continue to be hurt in an unhealthy relationship because I'm trying to love them unconditionally because it's like we're trying to measure love. Mm-hmm. It's like we're trying to measure this abstract mm-hmm. concept. Mm-hmm. Can mm-hmm. you really quantify love? People say, well, if you did this, then you're loving me unconditionally. Mm-hmm. And that was where the conditions come in because we're trying to put a measure on something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're supposed to love me unconditionally. Let's come back with proper communication. What does unconditional mean to you? Mm, yeah. What does unconditional mean to you? And a lot of times 
in the beginning of our process, when we're getting to know someone, when we're building a relationship with them, we don't talk about the hard things. True. Now, we might even discuss, oh, he didn't do me right. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was crazy. Oh, my goodness. She did this. She did that. He did this. He did that. But learn from the mistakes that have already been made or mm -hmm. learn from past relationships, past issues and say, how can I move forward from this? How can I be better for from this and say, okay, well, maybe next time we need to have a clear understanding what unconditional means. Yeah. Maybe next time we have need to have a clear understanding of what you mean by love is blind. We need to have a clear understanding of what you mean by you're supposed to love me without limits or whatever other things we say. Get a clear understanding for we need some time. How much time do you need? Get properly communicate and get a clear understanding of what that means to that person. Cause even you and I, we are sitting here having a conversation and we can both say love is blind. We both still are going to have two different perspectives, yeah. two different understandings and two different thought processes when it comes to that. Like, okay, this is where I'm going. And until I open my mouth and begin to talk it out and you open yours and begin to talk it out, we won't see where we're different. Right. And that's the same thing in any kind of relationship, whether it's the parental relationship, whether it's a dating relationship, whether it's a friendship, because a friend, a friend may feel like if you're my friend and you love me, this should be OK. But if I've communicated properly communicated to you that this is not OK with me to do me like this then you know that it's not. So yeah. when this relationship has to come to an end, you understand that this is why it's happening versus I'm just, I just say something to you haphazardly and you don't fully have an understanding of what it means to me. You know, like you ever tell your children, hurry up and they still take forever. You tell a kid, hurry up, a teenager <laughs> per se, hurry up because they do it all the time. Hurry up. They like <laughs> chilling with their headphones. Uh, and you like, I said, hurry up. <laughs> So their understanding of hurrying is like, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And your understanding is like, you need to move two times faster than you moving. But there's not a clear understanding of what that word hurry up means. So to the friend, there's not a clear understanding of what the word friend means or what the word love you mean. Love means you just supposed to roll with me however when it. And that's what we're talking about the lies that we believe yeah. that because somebody loves you, they just supposed to roll with you. However, mm -hmm. whenever, whatever you want to do. No, no because no, no, no. all of my real friends, we don't have a lot of <laughs> real friends. They challenge me like, come on, girl, you can right. do that. Stop tripping. You know, that is what a real friend does. They'll let you, they're going to let you cry about it. They're going to let you vent. And then they're going to call you to the carpet on your mess. That's a real friend. That's a and whole that's life them working. loving you. So the idea of let me do whatever I want to do means you love me. No, no, that's a lie that many people believe about love. Yeah, and I think adjacent to that that ride or die term. Mm -hmm. I don't like that because am I supposed to do whatever because we're friends or you might? Why I got to die in this relationship? Like you know my <laughs> understanding. Why I got to die? Like can I be your ride and live friend? Like come on now. <laughs> Or do I have to jeopardize my freedom? Mm -hmm. Like for that, it's like, no, that because to me, I think that's another limitless whatever. If you mm -hmm. love me, then you go help me bury the body. No, no, no. Don't commit a crime around me because I will testify I, against I, you. I, I'm the friend that'll love you and we, I will take up a collection and put something on your books because I ain't going to jail with nobody. Right? Nobody. I don't have that prison ministry. Mm -hmm. Like it's no. not from the inside, maybe from the outside, but not from the inside. So mm -hmm. I think when we have terms like that, I think it is birthed from unhealthy understanding. A lot of times you do whatever because yes. mm -hmm. you love me. Like uh -huh. if you love me, no, yeah. no. And on the flip side, I really believe that initially a lot of these terms are supposed to have a positive connotation mm -hmm. instead of a negative. But I think the understanding of people or the lack thereof turns it into a negative connotation because we know that God loves us mm -hmm. unconditionally. Okay. That's not negative. That's positive. We know that God's love is limitless. We know that and we, his love is not blind because he mm -hmm. sees all and knows all, but he still loves us in spite of. So when we go, when we talk about those things, I think initially they should have a positive connotation mm -hmm. but because of many of the actions that are added to them and the way people 
abuse them yeah. or the way they have been abused in the past. Like you said, it's borderline or becomes manipulative. And then it's a, uh, this is what you're supposed to do because this is what I want you to do despite what you feel. Like you said, setting yourself on fire to keep other people warm. And we may think, oh, I would never do that, but we do it all the time. Yes. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, setting yourself on fire to keep someone else warm, yeah. setting yourself on fire mentally, emotionally, physically, dealing with things that are not good for you because yeah. it appeases someone else. And that's where we have to separate. So I think that we have a job to do. Mm. And what we have a job to do is when we come into this knowledge and this understanding, then it's our job to now teach the next generation and make sure that the people that come behind, the young people that come behind us are clearly understanding what these things mean. Being encouraged to discuss with other people and communicate properly. Because if I teach my children what it means to me and Lula Mae in Alabama teach her kids what it means to her, it still could be something completely different. Yeah. So therefore, proper communication and talking, understanding what this means to you, what it means to me. Yeah. And I think that is so key is communicating that to the next generation and own generation, like how we relate to one another, because I think that piece is called accountability. Yeah. Accountability Absolutely. on how we're using this word love is not to weaponize love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think to do that, we have to address the misunderstandings mm -hmm. about some of these things around surrounding what we deem love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because like you said, the one that gets, you need to love me without limits. Well, that's that person have that capacity mm -hmm. and capacity is something that's, that's a whole, capacity is a whole, <laughs> whole nother podcast. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that's important because I could want something from you or desire something from you. But if you don't have the capacity, doesn't mean that you don't love me the way that you know how mm -hmm. until you get the tool skills, the, self-awareness to consciousness to grow and expand your capacity then it is what it is mm -hmm. people will continue to be in toxic mm -hmm. negative relationships because the heart you know we, the emotion yeah the emotion says I love you I, I'm still I still love them I still care about them so I'm supposed to be with them no, it's okay for you to love somebody. It's okay for you to be concerned about them. It's okay for you to have empathy for them and not be in a relationship. Yep. Yeah, because a lot of times, and this is what I've have experienced, is the grief of the ideal mm. of the relationship. Yeah. Because we we thought it was gonna now see you you now see you your 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 lies that people believe about love going to a whole <laughs> nother segment. But that's true. That's true. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I the idea of a relationship mm -hmm. is sometimes the hardest thing to grieve because it's that thing that's still in the midst. Mm -hmm. It's still in the air of what could have, mm -hmm. what possibly, what may have, ooh, what I kids would have looked like <laughs> oh we would have built this nice home you know we we had all these plans and mm -hmm. this, that's what I think it is and I think that the, the idea that's still in the midst of the unknown mm -hmm. that's the part so definitely grieving the possibility yeah. of a relationship or the idea of a relationship what I thought mm -hmm. was happening and it didn't go that way that's I think that's definitely emotionally and mentally more difficult than actually releasing someone from a relationship because it's like we were on this road trip mm -hmm. and all of a sudden poof, the car just disappeared right and now it's like what, what? <laughs> because you know what I think the healthy part and what has helped me personally like move and I and I don't really like the word say move on but like heal and reframe that experience is that I don't have to grieve the ideal. What I have to grieve is that this ideal won't be with that person, but I still hold on to the ideal of the relationship that I want. Mm -hmm. It's still possible because what grief says is that there's no more possibilities. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do, what I have chosen to do is say, there's still possibilities. It's just not with this particular person. Even though things were not, or did not pan out with this person, that doesn't have anything to do with everyone else. And that to me could be rather 
it's romantic, whether it's a parent, whether because some of us we we won't have the type of relationships we desire to have with our parents that that won't happen or you won't have the type of relationship you did you started out with your high school friend y'all were mm -hmm. best buds but now you're both in your 30s or your 40s and it's like uh, this we're not on the same path because we're not planted in the same field anymore right the seasons of my life have changed and I'm somewhere else if that's what you want to do then our lives are planted in mm -hmm. two different fields and I we both have to be okay with that so I'm grieving that this is not going forward with you mm -hmm. But I'm open to the fact that it still could happen with somebody else. Right. Yeah. And that's friendship, romantic. Yeah. So when we talk about lies, lies about love, love, this is so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. And it has so many facets to it because, again, we're all human beings and we're doing this thing called life. And each and every day, all of us have a different understanding of what we believe certain things mean. We all have a different view on things. We've all experienced things mm -hmm. differently. So we respond to them differently. And when we forge forward to build relationships with other people, then we're pulling them into what we believe, what we think and how we feel. And sometimes that's not properly communicated. Yeah. So you're on the playing field of my ideas but you're not even aware that you're on that playing field. Yeah. It all goes back to understanding because you hear so many people say that one of the most important things about building healthy, sustainable relationships is communication. Proper communication. Yeah, proper. Proper, proper. yeah. It has healthy to have, communication. It has to have, yeah, it has to be proper. It has to be healthy because, I mean, we communicate in every way. You communicate with your body, communicate mm -hmm. with your eyes, you communicate with your tongue, with your pitch, with your words. You you communicate in so many different ways, but it has to be healthy, yeah. proper communication. You okay? I'm fine. Yeah. I'm communicating that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, notes, I'm not fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're saying we're communicating, but it's to understand. And you know, you've seen those couples where he'll she'll say one word and he knows exactly, but yeah. like, mm -mm, this is not a good time to ask her that. Or, Absolutely. Yeah, let's, we're going to wait till after dinner to ask him such such. And it's like, because it's like understanding they've, they've that. gathered mm -hmm. that understanding and mm -hmm. sometimes it takes time to really it definitely does it definitely I believe it takes time because the people that love you and that are in relationship with you for an extended period of time they don't even it doesn't have to be romantic mm -hmm. you have friends that know when a certain word is said oh hold up <laughs> baby <laughs> you know you all right you right know, they know to me that's all a part of love that's yeah. all a part of growing together and that's how it goes yeah. that's beautiful so moving forward when we address and confront the lies of love mm -hmm. we can move forward in a healthy Absolutely. constructive way not just the romantic ones but all relationships because sometimes you know people just focus on the mar marital relationships yeah, but i yeah. feel like especially as an unmarried person that getting to practice on all y'all <laughs> yeah and we want every relationship right that's why i say relationships mm. from surviving to thriving we're here to help you take your relationships from surviving to thriving don't just we Def, we never want to listen. I mean, and we may be talking about it in a romantic way, but never everything that you learn can be applied to multiple areas of your life because it works. We're human beings. We're people. It works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we have enjoyed another amazing episode of Girl Talk, and we thank you all for joining us. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button. Go down in the comments and tell us which part stood out to you the most. Share any lies you think that people believe about love. And if you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review that helps us get the word out. We also want to encourage you to head on over to our leadership podcast, Lead to Greatness, where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and great leaders from all around the world every week. So thank you for joining us. We hope that you tune in next week for another amazing episode as we continue to help you take your relationships from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. thriving. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>